Let's go next to Damien Tudor-Hope, who, as I said, is the New South Wales Finance and Small Business Minister. Good to talk to you again, Damien. You must be very pleased that uh, not only has Dominic Perrottet come into the job uh, and uh, focused very much on family issues, but he's looking, on, uh, looking at opening up the state as quickly as po he possibly can. Well, I, th I think a, a lot of today's announcements will be welcomed, certainly by small business, and, but also, I think, families. I think what has occurred today is a recognition that uh, we are social animals and that we need the support of other people around us and increasing the number of people we can have in our homes, increasing the number of people we can have, uh, have dinner with and uh, go out with, all those sort of things are a recognition of the, of the role that other people play in our lives. And I think having passed the 70% uh, mark, what the Treasurer has... Uh, Treasurer, I should, I'm so used to saying that. What the Premier, in fact, has said today, building on what Gladys Berejiklian has done, has said, we have a contract with the people of New South Wales to return to them the lifestyle and the social networks uh, which uh, have been taken away from them because of this health crisis. So... I really think that today is a, a sense of optimism and, and really quite wonderful for uh, the way that we look at ourselves uh, as social people uh, and reconnecting with the people we love and, and the families that we potentially haven't seen. Look, he's gone in the same direction as Gladys Berejiklian. He's just accelerated a bit. Shouldn't it be accelerated even further? For instance, there's no reason kids couldn't be at school this week or starting next week. There's no reason now with 70% vaccination and ready to open up for the vaccinated on Monday, we couldn't be doing that tomorrow. Yeah, well, Chris, uh, I'm not the Education Minister and I, I'm not part of the... Uh, cry, with the crisis cabinet, which no longer exists, which you've rightly pointed out, but no, I'm not part of those discussions. But I think the point you're making is 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 a good one, but and it is all all part of tracking to make sure that we get and return to kids the lost opportunity of learning. And uh, it, it, there, there will be many families who will say our kids should be back at school earlier. We, the sooner they get back, but. Uh, there is a balance in all this, and, and I'm I'm delighted that uh, uh, he has accelerated, and you identified it. Now it's two weeks we've accelerated it by small uh, a, a small thing, but I think a significant thing in terms of the message that it's sending. Uh, that as a state we owe it to look at people and that the, the suffering that they have uh, gone through as a result of this pandemic and the collateral suffering. You know, we've had the COVID uh, problem, but the mental health issues, the uh, the, the stress which is as placed on families, um, uh, those grandparents who haven't seen their grandchildren, and I'm, I'm in that category, uh, those uh, uh, the kids who haven't seen their parents, elderly yep. parents. It's been very tough. A lot, of people, time, very tough lot of, a lot of people suffering needlessly through this. On the economy, I want yep. to talk to. I want to get your reaction to the fact that we've seen global prices for coal and gas hit record levels this week because of what is seen as an energy crisis. Uh, large yeah. countries yeah. in the northern hemisphere just can't get enough energy, mainly because they've gone down a sort of clean energy path, and now they're caught short. So wouldn't New South Wales, which is a massive exporter of coal, aren't you doing the wrong thing, heading for net zero by 2050 in this state, when you actually stand to make enormous economic gains out of feeding this desperate hunger for energy across the world? Well, that's the good part that you've just highlighted, is that we do stand to gain significantly because of the resources that we have in New South Wales and the ability to export those resources. But... What I think that we as an economy should be doing is, is planning for the future and the way that we can deliver a, a guaranteed uh, power supply to the people of New South Wales in the future. Now, to the extent that that involves moving towards a renewable program, do it in conjunction in circumstances where we move towards that, where we say to industry, we say to business, we will make sure that we have that base load power that you can rely on. Now, I know you will say that, um, that doesn't that involve nuclear, doesn't that involve coal, doesn't that involve whatever. 
to the extent that we are planning that, and I know uh, the Energy Minister slash Treasurer, uh, he has a re energy roadmap well in his focus. And well, yeah, but, but, we, but, but no country's done this successfully. What I'm saying here is that, that there's an absolute hypocrisy here, if not an absolute paradox, in the fact that you're looking to make more money by exporting more coal that the world desperately wants at the moment at top dollar, yet you'll inflict economic pain on yourselves, on the people of New South Wales, trying to get to net zero here. Well, I ask you this question. Demonstrate to me how we have done that. Um, th th there has been no blackouts in New South Wales. Uh, the energy uh, prices in New South Wales have been stable, and, in fact, uh, to the extent that renewables are now impacting on the system, there are significant opportunities for reduction in energy prices. Y yes. I, I, I think I... we are setting ourselves up well. No, hang on a second. Of... second. I, I, I agree with your point, but that's because you've got you now 50, 60 per cent of your energy now coming from, from coal. And what my point is, if you get rid of that, that's when you'll get the pain. And, and the, the point that I make to you is, is that the way we get rid of it is the economically responsible thing to do, is if I went out there and turned coal off tonight, sure, you would have an argument with me. But if you if you have a strategy for saying, how do we how do we move towards a system of delivering baseload power which is stable, that industry can rely on, then the opportunity for New South Wales to attract industry to this state uh, is, is profound. And we'll what we see, should we'll be doing see. is... We will see. We will no, see. Uh, my we'll point see. is that no-one's been able to do this around the world so far, so we'll see. And we should, and we should learn from that. I will. Uh, we just are out of time. Thanks so much for joining us, Damien. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Thanks, Lance.